Welcome back to the channel and let's switch from kitchen knives to pocket knives and uh, today I got those two very interesting knives for me and I'll share my story with you as usual. So somehow I missed this company. Uh, they've been in the market uh, at least for US market for a few years already. They make uh, pretty good uh, really good value knives uh, not very expensive and everybody on youtube on internet is like raving about them somehow i missed them and i recently just got those two and uh, i'll tell you why <laughs> and i'll tell you a little story behind them it's not gonna be like a, a review as usual because there's so many reviews of those knives on the internet already and as i said everybody loves them i do love them as well just a little story behind them so first of all uh, i got those two knives at blade hq it's not sponsored by blade hq i paid my own money for those two knives that's my uh, obvious choice i looked at them um I found them through Blade HQ uh, emails, looked at them, and I like them. So, thanks to Blade HQ for um, good marketing. <laughs> so, those two knives are called, uh, knives are called Beluga. The company is Petrified Fish. <sighs> that's the way it is. I mean, that's how they, they come. They come in a small box in... Um, plastic and whatever and with the uh, extra stuff we'll talk about them but what got my attention first of all the shape got my attention very uh interesting shape which resonates to me personally and then the name uh, beluga uh let's talk about that mostly in this video not about the review <laughs> of how good those knives are so first of all what beluga is uh beluga is a russian word and it's derived from um, the word white, belly or belly, whatever. And this specific type of uh, word is used for the fish, for sturgeon, white sturgeon fish. That fish which uh, produces uh, black caviar, uh, which, again, Russia uh, used to be famous for, for many, many centuries. So... Um, this is the knife model. The company is called Petrified Fish. Uh, don't petrify beluga fish because it's really, really good. Uh, white fish is very tasty by itself. And black caviar, you know, it's it, it worth a lot of money. Don't want to talk about current market prices on the <laughs> black caviar, which comes from this fish and the origination of that. Uh, obviously, it doesn't come from Russia anymore uh, because for many, many years it was banned to uh, produce and export black caviar. That specific fish, uh, if you don't know much about it, just read. It's it's it's, a, it's amazing. It's very interesting. Um, just to understand how how cool the nature is it's really really huge fish it, at least used to be uh, the way it lives the way it travels from the sea to the river up the river um uh, and, and back it's it's amazing so now of course it's endangered it's uh no it's forbidden to uh catch this fish and get the caviar it's um at least in Russia. In some places, of course, in, even in Russia, they farm it. It's a very difficult process and they even let those uh, small fish into the sea. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking too much about the fish, but th that's exactly what I wanted to share with you. Uh, first of all, the shape resonated with me and then I took a closer look at it called Beluga. It, it resonated with me as well. So let's make the thing straight first. This knife, this shape of a knife, does not remind me of the beluga fish itself. Again, go online, find the picture of that fish. It will be way, way more uh, like aggressive looking with uh, with aggressive looking nose and, and all kind of fins. Huge fish, but it's not like this. It's, this knife does not look very specifically aggressive. Uh, the only aggressive thing about this knife is that it's really big. But uh, what I like about this knife, um, maybe a little bit of aggressiveness can be uh, found in this blood groove, which is a fuller, we all know. So it, this knife started to remind me very, very 
Russian traditional knives, very like, like looking looking like a Russian traditional knives. So that's why I first paid my attention to that. And I threw the pictures again in those emails and so on. So and then I took a closer look. Uh, what it is, what are materials, what's the price? And as I said already, amazing value. A lot of people said it as well. Um, this knife is less than $50 with um, a K100 steel, which is like a D D2, uh, micarta handles, liner lock construction, pocket clip, and so on, ball bearings. This knife is a little bit more than 50 being a smaller version of that knife. Um, again, with um, this one is Sandvik 14C uh, steel, uh, kind of like a G10 mixed layer orange black G10. Um, maybe that's why it's a little bit more expensive because of materials. I don't know, but bigger knife costs less, smaller knife costs more. You can find different, of course, color combinations for this one and for this one, and a little bit different of a blade shape. But I think this blade shape is what resonates with me personally really, really well. I like it. So let me show you a couple of my Russian knives. I don't think I've shown those knives on the channel before. Um, this is a very simple, let's call it like a no-name Russian hunting knife. And this one is, yeah, this one is uh, from one of those artisan uh, blacksmith uh, manufacturers. In Russia, uh, another type of hunting knife. It's not folding, yes, but especially with this one and this one, what you will see that there's, um, first of all, there's, uh, of course, the, um, like the blade is designed to be more usable for any type of outdoors and hunting activity. Similar here, lots of belly. It's not the longest blade as, as this one here, but anyway, lots of belly. High flat grind, doesn't matter. Here's a saber grind, here's like a high flat grind, here's a, again high flat grind here, fuller, no fuller, uh, doesn't matter. But then also the combination with the handle, which is gonna be a little bit more recessed down and a little bit more um, kind of like expanding towards the end. To me, this looks like a Russian knife and this looks like a Russian knife. This looks like more like a Turkish, a little bit of the Eastern, uh, of course, influence here. But anyway, those are the overall knife designs, which are not European, but more like a Russian one. So maybe, maybe behind the um, thought of the designer of those knives, this knife specifically was somewhat inspiration of the Russian knives. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but it, it resonated with me down to the point. So I bought two of those, the big one and the small one. Anyway, so a <laughs> um, couple words about the knives themselves. Uh, again, you can find a lot of uh, YouTube reviews uh, about those two knives in a different color uh, combination, different materials. Um, I think everybody loves them. Um, this one's a big knife. Um, not for everybody, for sure. Uh, for people with a larger hands, mine are like a little bit larger than average. For me, this knife fits the, the hand really, really well. Almost feels too big. Almost feels too big, so I don't know. Um, so let's come quickly compare it to PM2. Uh, as you can see, very similar size, more blade belly, of course, than PM2, but the handle-wise, um, yes, PM2 handle is uncomparably long. Um, Price-wise, the competition, of course, is uh, in other Chinese knives. This one's China, uh, uh, like CVV. Don't look at my fancy CVV <laughs> Babaclash or whatever it is. I made it out of three knives, but uh, CVV, uh, if they still sell those, really good knife would be in the same price uh, category as this knife, but um, this is a little bit better materials than default variant of CVV Backlash. Um, as you can see, similar size of the handle. This one is way slimmer and lighter knife, might be more useful for some smaller task, but again, just for size comparison. comparison. This smaller um, Beluga, uh, I'd say I have doubts about this being very effective knife. Um, 
it tolls it well for multiple reasons this one is being a front flipper flips well a little bit overbuilt um, everything's kind of like a nice and bulky small ones is small one is nice if you like smaller knives but for me this one is like a little bit more difficult to operate especially especially with the front flipper um this lanyard notch is kind of like unusable i can could barely fit the paracord in there uh this clip is uh, kind of like a hot spot here for the small knife and for me if i want to like uh, hold it really nice i don't have a full four finger grips on this handle that's why i started making this um little lanyard here uh just for my pinky to catch on and again i'm still not happy i'm still not happy with the knife but from <laughs> usability point of view the smaller knife it is still kind of like a rounded and feels good in the hand way way nicer and a slim uh, like a thinner uh, behind behind the edge type of grind uh, different steel 14c so this one being very very bulky knife like almost four millimeters on the spine it, I feel that behind the edge, it is not as uh, thin. Probably it shouldn't be. But sli from a sliciness point of view, this one or this one would be a way better choice. Not this one. This one is for everyday carry. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the, from a, also from a price point of view, um, if we're comparing CV to petrified fish and size comparison, this one is about the same blade length, maybe a little bit more convenient handle, in my opinion. Yeah, also not a full grip for me, but a little bit larger. And more manageable lanyard hole everybody on the internet is like oh it's such a great lanyard attachment here and blah 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 i don't care if it's a lanyard hole if there's a space for lanyard hole in the handle i'd prefer the knife to have it rather than not like here like here not like here but anyway <laughs> so uh, let's wrap up <laughs> with this uh, with this story um if you missed those knives, like ADC knives, Beluga from Petrified Fish, maybe other knives from them, go check them out. I really, really was impressed with the quality, with the package, what they send. They send uh, spare uh, screws, they send spare uh, Teflon washers instead of ball beatings. Uh, they send uh, this cleaning cloth with the knife and like for under fifty dollars with this knife, I was really, really, really impressed with everything. Like as how much I'm getting for <laughs> for this money, and again how good of quality it is. There are a few things which I was not like impressed in, in general. Like for example, this logo which they do put here. It's like I don't, I can't see what it is. Like it's something here. Um, again, lanyard hole is not very good. Maybe clip is could be done better. The pivot could be more recessed, uh, and this one specifically. Uh, the markings kind of like unreadable here. Uh, what kind of steel it is? I I can't read it only with the magnifying glass. But anyway, overall the knife is great. Action is good. Quality is good. Materials are good. Uh, sh sharp obviously out of the box if it wouldn't be sharp i would tell you right away about any knife so let's wrap up thank you for watching um let's have a discussion on this specific topic do you want me to talk a little bit more about lanyards i do want to talk with you about lanyards if you're interested or if you have any specific questions uh, let me know uh, I think this type of lanyard is the most useful one for a pocket knife. Uh, we can talk about it. Maybe I'll tell you how to make one. This is this one. I'm, I'm going to change this one. Uh, probably I'm going to remove. I tried it. It's not moving. Um, not very happy. Anyway, thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye.